Earlier this year, we covered a brand new software-only hypervisor exploit for the Xbox 360 that only required a USB flash drive known as Bad Update. This was a hypervisor exploit that opened up the console for unsigned code execution, which means access to homebrew, emulators, region-free games, custom dashboards, and access to the hacked OG Xbox emulation layer. Bad Update, however, unlike the JTAG or RGH modded Xbox 360 works on all Xbox 360 variants, including the latest Winchester model without any modification to the console at all. And in my earlier video this year, I had it running on my Winchester Xbox 360 E model. However, the reliability of the exploit was around 30%. Many people were unable to run the exploit as it involved rerunning the exploit until it worked. And because the exploit itself is based on a race condition, it can take anywhere from 5 to 20 minutes to run successfully. Patience was definitely required. And honestly, a hardware modded RGH or JTAG 360 was still very much preferred. And it seemed like bad update would never see any meaningful updates as the stage 3 bootloader speed would not be possible to be improved. However, everything has changed just in the last few days with a brand new 1.2 release of bad update that not only improves the reliability of the exploit from 30% to a staggering 80%, it triggers the exploit much faster, usually only running in less than a minute. And in some of my tests, it can trigger in a matter of seconds. This is quite incredible. Now let's take a look at some real world tests. For reference, if we go back to our March 2025 video, the successfully triggered exploit that I captured on camera took just over 10 minutes to run. Now, of course, this footage didn't show the amount of failures and reboots and reattempts that I had to make to get this point across. And also, if you notice here, the footage is sped up significantly by a factor of 2000 times in order to kind of show how long this exploit takes to run. Bad update wasn't really more of a proof of concept or at least a tool that you could use to extract your CPU and DVD keys without modification. Now let's take a look at some real world bad update 1.2 tests that are all captured with my camera pointing at the screen directly with no edits. Now of course I am speeding up the footage just to keep this video moving along, but the first attempt ran successfully in just 33 seconds from start to finish. Now I thought this was a bit of a fluke, so I ran it again. The second attempt also ran successfully. This one, however, took a little bit longer from start to finish, but it successfully exploited my console in about 44 seconds. So to keep score, we have two successful attempts out of two, with both attempts taking less than one minute to exploit the Xbox 360. Now, two attempts isn't exactly a massive sample size, so I ran it again. Attempt number three also ran successfully. So here we are, three of three so far, but this one ran the fastest at 37 seconds. By now, you're starting to see how reliable this exploit is, at least in my real-world experiences. Attempt 4 also ran successfully, but this one was slower than the others. Now, when I say slower, it was still nothing compared to what it used to be. Attempt 4 finished at 1 minute and 12 seconds. Still a magnitude of 10 times faster than the 1.0 bad update. In fact, Every single attempt that I ran, which was a total of 10, all completed successfully. Now, I personally did not have a single failure where I had to turn off the Xbox 360 and retry. However, it's unfair to say that this exploit is 100% reliable, just because it was for me. The community has been running many tests and there are still scenarios where the Xbox 360 may crash. However, things are so much better now with the 1.2 revision of Bad Update. It's quite remarkable. The fastest exploit I saw took just 7 seconds to run, and I couldn't believe my eyes. On average, however, for me, we're looking at around 50 seconds for the exploit to complete successfully. Once again, using Rock Band Blitz Trial won't cost you anything and is the preferred way to run the exploit. Not only does it cost you nothing, you can easily put it on a USB stick, but it's also the preferred way to run the exploit as the background pattern is a good indicator that the exploit is continuing to run. If it stops scrolling or if it freezes, it indicates that the Xbox 360 has frozen and it needs to be rebooted and retried. However, what you'll find very quickly with the 1.2 bat update is that failures are far less frequent. Now, a few other updates that I did want to mention since my earlier video on bad update. 
Now I mentioned previously that it was not possible to run any unsigned homebrew or executable via bad update that would need to be individually patched with a tool known as XCX tool. However, you no longer need to do this either with the latest vision of FreeMyZ or the tool that I'm using here known as Z Unshackle. This is the app that runs immediately after the bad update stage 3 loader has completed successfully and applies the very same kernel and hypervisor patches that you would find on any RGH or JTAG modded Xbox 360. What this means is you no longer need to patch any .xex files manually, which allows a custom dashboard like Aurora and its homebrew store to be much more useful with the bad update modded Xbox 360. Now homebrew can be downloaded, installed and run directly without manual patches. I tested this with a range of various emulators and homebrew as you can see here. This is MAME running on my Xbox 360 with many cool arcade games. This also means that original Xbox or OG Xbox games can boot and run without requiring any executable to run first in order to enable that functionality. Once again, Z Unshackle has these patches built in, so it really means that Bad Update 1.2 and Aurora is much closer to that of a RGH and JTAG system and all of a sudden has become a very desirable thing. While there is some additional hoops that you still have to jump through to exploit your Xbox 360, it means that it opens up the exploit to a larger range of users that were potentially too afraid to open up their Xbox 360 and mod it themselves or pay the money for a hardware modder to do it for them. Now this 1.2 bad update has been the work of a developer known as KMX360 and according to their write-up they say instead of saving the Oracle cipher set and replacement for just one whitening value I am pre-computing this for essentially all possible whitening values. Then in the overwriter thread instead of doing the overwrite if one specific cipher text matches I can do a lookup and if I find any matching cipher text I can do the attack. The way that I've still managed to win the race condition with the slower overrider loop is by creating a lookup table indexed by some bits of the ciphertext. The cost of a lookup in this scheme is a single load that should always hit the L2 cache. With a carefully chosen number of ciphertext bits, I can fit this table in CPU cache and also have nearly all the ciphertext and replacement pairs in it. I have not managed to eliminate the crashes yet, but even without this success rate is still approximately 80% with each run from stage 3 onwards taking approximately 15 seconds. This is based on my own testing and sharing an early proof of concept with the users of the Xbox 360 Hub Discord server who got similar results. Now to be very clear, I'm not someone that has the intricate knowledge of how the bad update exploit works, but I do understand thread race conditions and I do understand pre-computing and lookup tables. And this particular method seems to be the right approach. And who knows, I did mention that in the first video that I made about bad update, I did suggest that Grim Doomer's approach may never be improved based on the race condition approach as well as the time it took. But as always, when you throw down the limitations and a challenge to someone, there's going to be a smart security researcher out there that tries to improve upon things. And here we are. I personally never thought it would be possible to improve bad update in this fashion, but this is 100% real. And this exploit, I would say, is almost the preferred way to modify any Xbox 360 to date. It's simple, it's fast, and it just works. Now, if you do want to install and run this particular version, if you have bad update 1.0 already set up on your USB flash drive, it's just a matter of downloading the 1.2 update and replacing the files either in your Rock Band Blitz or Tony Hawk Wasteland folder. Now, no one really should be using Tony Hawk Wasteland, so I'm going to assume everyone's using Rock Band Blitz. What you want to do is copy the bad update payload and content folders and replace the existing ones. I also recommend that you download and install the latest Z Unshackle, open up the archive, extract the contents of the Z Unshackle Beta 102 folder to the root of the USB flash drive. If you haven't run bad update before and this is your first time, you'll need a FAT32 formatted USB flash drive. What you want to do is perform the exact steps that I mentioned but you also want to download the Rock Band Blitz trial version from Digix and extract that to the root of the USB flash drive. Now to be clear this will be the bare minimum to run the exploit itself. Of course you'll still need to download a custom dashboard like XCX Menu and Aurora to do anything useful with this exploit. 
but I did outline how to do this in my previous video. So feel free to check it out there if you need to, or take a look at someone like Mr. Mario 2011, who does comprehensive update guides on all things bad update. Once again, if you're using Z Unshackle 102 Beta, you don't need to manually use XCX tool to patch any unsigned code executables, and you should all be set up. All you need to do is then go into your games folder, run Rock Band Blitz Trial, and then perform the exploit, which after one minute or so should run successfully. And the great part is you can store this flash drive for safekeeping and use it on any Xbox 360 out there from the very earliest Xenon models to the latest Winchester models. This exploit should run perfectly well on any model Xbox 360. Of course, a JTAG or RGH modded Xbox 360 is probably still the preferred way to go, but the appeal now of a 1.2 bad update model Xbox 360 is far more appealing, and I think a lot of people that were turned away from the 1.0 version due to the time it took and its reliability are now probably looking at this wanting to run this exploit. And with that, we are going to leave it here for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know how you're faring with the 1.2 bad update exploit, how much time it's taking for you. Have you had any crashes along the way? I definitely want to hear what you have to say in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, please don't forget to leave me a thumbs up and we will catch you on the next episode. Bye for now.